Welcome everyone to the next series in our webinars for Clover HR. Today I'm going to talk to you about envy and jealousy in the workplace. This is our team of trusted HR advisors. We have over 200 years experience between us all so we can ensure we get the best advice to you. We, are, we all have our specialisms in different areas from recruitment, training, coaching, um, through to wellbeing rewards and many other people's strategies. So if you do need anything, there's a big team of us in order to help you. This is myself, HR business partner, Lynn Berman. I am here to help and I'm gonna go through a series of topics today and uh, over the coming months. What I would ask you if you wanna keep your questions to the end, which would be great. Alternatively, put it in the chat box and I'm happy to answer them at the end of the presentation as well. And if you could mute your mics, that would be great just so I can get through the information I have, and then if there is anything at the end, just unmute yourself and feel free to ask me. Just feel someone raise a hand. If you want to ask anything, feel free to ask. Okay, so today we're gonna to go through Envy and Jealousy webinar. Um, the contents I'm going to cover are what is workplace envy, how does envy affect me and what does it look like, how can envy affect a business, um, what is jealousy in the workplace and what does it look like, how we can, I'm going to really try and flip it on its head and make it a positive, so how can we manage envy in the workplace and how can we manage jealousy in the workplace and then I'll try and summarise so we can stop this happening. It, it, it does occur, but we can make the best of it and make it stop. So what is workplace envy? As much as employers may not want to admit it, envy doesn't leave itself at the company doors. So envy is present in any every workplace and can have a considerable effect on the employees and the organisation as a whole. So according to a recent survey, uh, workplace envy can be extremely detrimental to employers and employees and the study found that an employee senses they're being treated worse than their co-workers. So situations that create envy, it can have an, a significant impact on their productivity. So what is workplace? Sorry. So what is workplace then? We, we all have an understanding of what envy is, um, but let's take a quick second to define it. Um, so workplace envy is the distress we feel when others get what we want. Envy is a universal feeling, so everyone has been envious at least once in their lifetime. The issue isn't whether an employee, whether or not an employee will feel envious, it's how they deal with this um, when it surfaces. So envy is often known as the green-eyed monster, and if you're not careful, this monster can destroy lives both personally and professionally. So how does envy affect me? Workplace envy has a powerful ability to impact your personal success in the workplace negatively. So this negative impact manifests itself in five different ways. So you lose your competitiveness. So if you are always pinning after what others have, you will begin to lose your desire for your own skills. Instead of releasing your total talent, you'll spend too much time obsessing on what, what's making the threat to yourself. So this thought pattern blocks you from seeing potential opportunities in front of you. You, you cannot be authentic in your ways, so you can never be, be who you truly are if you constantly concern yourself with the actions of others. Instead of creating your own voice, you begin, you become stuck in an attempt to be, become someone or something else that you're not. Your ability to network is disturbed, so here if you are envious of those around you, you cannot build the respect and trust necessary in order to connect with people honestly. This inability to connect with others is an unyielding barrier to networking. And if you can't network, you'll miss out on plenty of opportunities, both career and business. It is harder to trust yourself. So the bitterness and animosity envy breeds um, can, can make it hard for you to believe in yourself. And so this lack of belief in turn makes it difficult to trust yourself. When you do not trust yourself, you won't have the desire or ability to sell yourself, pursue your career ambitions, engage in other positive career actions and engage with others and respect others. And your self-worth and happiness begins to fade. So envy has a powerful ability to take control of the mind. So when envy clouds your mind, it becomes tough to focus on your self-worth and happiness. Envy has the capability to consume those positive thoughts that you want. 
So how can Envy affect your business? So Envy can just restrict team and undermine company performance by leading to missed opportunities and organisational inefficiencies. The first effect is rather obvious. If you're envious of another person, your relationship is bound to be strained um, or not what it once was. If your personal relationship is strained, your work relationship will be strained also. And envy can lead to ideas um, created within the business to be ignored or dismissed entirely. So when your business becomes to stifle the creativity of its employees, they will leave and those will be the most, mo most creative will be the first to leave. Employees can also begin to actively sabotage other employees because of envy um, and deliberate sabotage of any employee, much less a high performer, negatively affects your business in a several ways. So sabotage of this nature could lower team morale, worsen communication within the team and increase labour turnover and employees leave and decrease productivity overall. What is jealousy in the workplace? We need to look at what this looks like. So does your workplace feel like a team or does it sometimes feel a little more like a school playground? So that sentiment may point to more serious underlying um, problems, jealous co-workers. So jealousy is a natural human emotion but we all, that we all have experienced at one point or another, but it should never dominate our relationship with other people, especially the colleagues that we have to work with every day. So if you suspect your co-workers may be acting jealous, um, we're going to look at seven signs here for what to look for in order to prevent it hopefully going on in the future. So if you see co-workers love it when people make mistakes, they are constantly celebrating your mistakes and reveling in the times you fail. Uh, this is a telltale sign that jealousy is there. So what you should do, if possible, is try and ignore the showboating in the hopes that it will eventually stop. But if it does not work, try speaking to them about it or discuss it with your line manager or HR. It, it's not um, an acceptable way of performing and behaving, therefore we need to nip it in the bud straight away. They don't offer help. So you go out of your way to help them, but they do not help you. That may mean that they want, to fail, they want you to fail um, because they hate seeing you succeed. Um, what you can do about this, they may, they, may not, they may be jealous or they may be envious of the fact that you do need help sorry, oblivious to the fact that you do need help. So ask them directly to give you a hand. If that fails, find someone else. So they openly criticize you. Maybe they embarrass you in front of others. Maybe they highlight every mistake you make. Maybe they do not understand the basic rules of etiquette and are overly negative towards you. This is, but it is also likely that this type of behavior comes from a place of resentment. Maybe you see, they see you as a success. Your, your success is a threat, so they may want to knock you down a peg or two. So what to do? Distinguish the bits of criticism from the petty little digs. The problem may not be that they are jealous, but rather that they don't understand how to provide effective feedback to you. If the issue persists, then it may be time to raise your concerns with the superior, but try and address it um, at first. Are you, they talk behind your back. Now, this isn't acceptable, but are your co-workers chatterboxing until you, um, until you enter the room? They may be talking um, behind your back. We are not saying you should instantly be suspicious of the slight whisper um, of gossip, but trust your gut if you notice the consistent pattern form. What to do about this? Try talking to them about it and keep it positive. Maybe there is a reason they seem to be excluding you from that conversation. Try and keep it lighthearted at first. And they give you backhanded compliments. The backhanded compliment is the ultimate form of passive aggressiveness. So whether a coworker happens to criticise um, you for your appearance, personality or personal life, these sorts of comments should not be tolerated. And certainly managers and leaders within the room now need to put stop to this. If it is an ongoing problem, confront them. Tell them that their comments make you feel uncomfortable and ask them to stop or ask someone to ask them to stop if you don't feel comfortable doing that. If they sabotage your work, so chances are they see your success getting in the way of theirs. So what to do? This is a serious concern that does need um, to be addressed immediately. So I would say if a co-worker is trying to limit your performance, talk to your line manager as soon as possible. And they could spread lies about you. Again, unacceptable. Lying usually is a kind of deeper underlying issue, such as a lack of trust or feelings of inadequacy. If you have a co-worker that is trying to tangle you up in a web of lies, it may mean that 
they co go cover their position within the team or they view your success with envy. So what to do? Office gossip is one thing, but spreading lies is a whole other problem. Do not let this escalate and address it straight away with the people concerned. So we really want to turn this into a positive and how to manage envy in the workplace. We know that workplace envy is inevitable. Therefore, anyone in a position of leadership needs to know how to recognise and manage envy in their subordinates. There are several tactics a leader can use to better control envy directed towards themselves or other team members. So share the power, make sure that you're sharing recognition with your, with your subordinates and promoting those who deserve it. Give your employees a range of assignments to do and make sure you're spreading around opportunities to succeed, and not just select a few within your team. So when you reward your employees with responsibility and credit, you gain recognition yourself. The more your subordinates succeed and are promoted, the better you look as a manager, which is called a win-win. Turn a scarcity into something that is plentiful. What I mean by this is some resources such as budgets are fixed. Others are flexible and should be adjusted as needed. For example, if team members are always stepping over one another in meetings, guarantee each member has a one-to-one -one with you every week or give limited time for each person in the team to talk. When resources are shared, there's no reason for someone to be envious of the resources another has. So sharing resources also lays a framework for your team to share and to collaborate better with each other. Separate an envious role and a target role when responsible. So envious, give envious and those who envy, those they envy separate roles um, to differentiate them. Um, if the two individuals are separated in a manner that serves direct comparison between the two, it helps to curtail that workplace envy and they won't be looking at each other as, as competitors. So promote open communication, so encourage your team members to be transparent and always communicate how they feel. Open communication can help to nip envy in the bud straight away and if a subordinate comes to you to share their envious feelings, make sure you listen to them. Together we can work out how and why they are envious and generate a solution for this feeling. So stopping envy before it reaches a critical mass works to eliminate many of the negative manifestations that this can bring. So encourage regular check-ins, regular one-to-ones and regular corridor conversations just to help. And assess emotional maturity of applicants. So if you want to take a proactive approach to managing workplace envy, start with the application process. Make sure that this process includes an assessment of each other's emotional um, maturity. So evaluate the emotion, emotional maturity of each applicant and help weed out those who would be more susceptible to feelings of envy. And how to manage jealousy in the workplace. We don't want this, but managing staff can be tricky. And jealousy of superiors can creep in when team members feel unappreciated. Um, and this can trigger and be triggered by praise, pay rise or a promotion of their boss, but it could also be a result of frustration with their own um, progress and success. So some uh, jealous employees will aim to bring others down, making the work environment unpleasant. So this could lose the manager some good team members and cause a decrease in team morale, which we don't want. So I've tried to outline seven ways to manage jealousy in the workplace and competition, just to avoid them becoming an issue. So remain professional throughout. However you decide to discuss an issue with an employee, you should always stay professional. Don't make it personal. Continue to do your own work to the best of your ability and to speak to the employee the same way you would speak to any other team member and refrain from making it personal. If an employee has been has taken pleasure in trying to make you look bad, um, it may be tempting to give them a dressing down with an audience. However, this is unprofessional and will only serve to prove that their actions are affecting your work ethic. So take it on a one-to-one -one level. Be positive with them. Many jealous employees make assumptions of their wage their boss earns and convince themselves that they could do a better job for their money. So don't necessarily take into account the hard work, years of service and experience that you have got to bring to the position. So they probably don't realise the workload that's involved. Therefore, it will be in their favour to see you stressed out and behind deadline. Stay calm, remain positive, and appearing to struggle will give the employee ammunition and the impression that you don't deserve the role. So many of the signs of jealousy can be turned into positives, for example, setting targets or linking it to drive and determination to succeed. So, sorry, 
I had refrained from bragging. So I tried to avoid any conversations about things that involve money, such as a new car, a house, a, va a vacation, or, right, or raises. Avoid topics that could be seen as, um, they could come off as condescending to your, your team. And listen, listen to your employees. Your employee will more likely to feel jealous of you if they feel they're underachieving themselves. So as a manager, you should engage with your staff about their goals. One-to-ones are a good way to give this and give them a chance to think about what they want to achieve and how they're going to achieve it. Offering advice will help them to perceive you as less of a threat and more as an, an advisory and a supportive role. So when your employee feels they have more support from you, they will see you as a mentor rather than an obstacle. Remember your position, regardless of the employee's emotions, your own position should never be compromised for the sake of their ego. So taking a lighter approach to managing a jealous employee will only be offering them special treatment, as it were, and they will inevitably act out as a result. So they will repeat the behaviour, believing it to be the cause of special treatment. Give credit where credit's due, however. It could be tempting to ignore achievements in employees who do their best to find fault. It is best to give credit where credit is due and to encourage staff to concentrate on their own successes rather than on their failures or other people's failures. This will help increase motivation and cooperation and hopefully decrease any hostility and animosity within the team. And have a one-to-one -one discussion. So if the situation doesn't improve, you may need to take your employees aside and have a calm, honest chat about their behavior. They might not be aware that they are coming across their, the way they are and they, might not, they may need their behavior pointing out to them to try and put it to bed. So do this in a calm, professional manner and remember to keep it professional and nothing personal in there. The thing to remember about jealous staff is that they will more than likely be unhappy with their own position. So you need to dig deeper into what's affecting them and what they're feeling like. And helping people to succeed will go further than abusing your power. In summary, um, be positive. So do not let a situation build up. Address things as you see them. The key here um, is to have the right structures in place to enable the positivity to outweigh the negativity. And when the balance is in the wrong place, it might be able to identify that and deal with it equally with the right procedures in place, such as grievances, disciplinary harassment, etc. But talk to someone if you feel there is a problem, never let it fester and have regular one-to-ones and check in with your team so they know what you're feeling and how you're feeling, but always remain professional throughout. And just remember, um, workplace envy is a powerful enemy. It has the potential to threaten personal relationships, career advancement and organisational success, so it shouldn't be ignored. Still, workplace envy is an unbeatable foe. It can be beaten with the right managers in place, with the right procedures in place. Thank you very much for listening to my webinar today. If there are any questions, by all means, please feel free. I'm just going to take a look at the chat to see if there are any questions at the moment. I'll come off screen sharing and just see if there is any. So we've got a question here. What can we do if we report the attitude of one colleague that it's not correct to the manager and he's not taking action about that? Certainly this needs to be addressed. Um, there, there is sometimes a difference in the way managers treat people. So we need to address this wholeheartedly and make sure that every manager is consistent. So I would make sure you address this with the manager yourself and highlight to them that there, there is consistency needed throughout. So how can you prove this envy and jealous behaviors? Again, behaviors are perceived and um, not everyone perceives je jealousy and envy the same way as someone else. So always just try and make sure you remain professional throughout and have that conversation with people, that how they come across and how they're perceiving their, you believe their attitude to have. Got a question here. Have you known managers to be jealous of their staff? I have. Um, I have been in environments where managers potentially aren't pushing their employees enough because they feel a threat to them. This again is wrong. The best managers are the ones that bring on their staff and help them succeed. Thank you for listening today. I hope it's been useful. By all means, contact me um, on my details. I'll put my screen back, my, my details back on the screen for you. Um, and if you need anything, call, contact myself or Clover.
We'll be running a next series of webinars over the next few weeks, so just keep an eye on LinkedIn and Facebook to see when we're on next. Thank you ever so much and take care.